This is Governor Larry Hogan, and I don't always have time to listen to podcasts, but uh, I do enjoy listening to the Maryland Crabs podcast. Live from a grungy kitchen table located in Annapolis, Maryland's scenic and historic capital, it's the Maryland Crabs podcast. With each episode, your hosts, Tim Hamilton, John Frenet, and the occasional guest will dive in and pick apart the stuff that really matters most to you. We're too lazy to actually solve any of these problems, but we can definitely stir the pot. From schools, politics, parking in the fire lane, to those horrible people who drive BMWs. And here with this week's episode, live from the kitchen table, Tim Hamilton and John Frenet. Everybody has a bucket list, and tonight, Susan Moynihan is joining us. <laughs> Hi! That was about five the, tries the, the to big, get that. The big laugh on that one is that we tried to do this introduction like four times, and I screwed it up time after time after time. But Susan is a local Annapolitan who is a new author, I'm going to say. I don't yes. Know. Um, is this your first book? It is my first book. This is exciting, and it is called 100 Things to Do in Annapolis and the Eastern Shore Before You Die. Yeah. It's fairly simple. So it's a bucket list. And there's a bucket on the cover. So there you go. There, there is. I thought that was a, I thought it was a bucket. No, okay. Well, it could be a pail, not a bucket. I don't know. <laughs> so um, a pail was metal. And a that is metal, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, so it's a pail list. Yeah. It's okay. a pail list. It's our own take because we do think differently in Annapolis. Yeah. There we go. Um, but it was, your publicist has sent me this book and I, I get a number of them throughout the year and usually... Bragger. They suck. I asked um, him to send you that book too. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> On my well, hit they, list. They, they said. They said. Usually they suck, and I'm like, okay, well, I'll read through this. It was a, you know, it's a fairly easy read. It's big print, not a lot of pictures, but it's got you mm-hmm. know some big graphics. So that's yeah. my kind of book. And I'm going through. And I'm no going, long words. Man, she's got this right. <sighs> That's for for, awesome. for a lot of it. For a lot of it, I, I mean, I can't speak to the. I don't do seafood, so I can't speak to the, some of the fishy stuff. Gotcha. But as a local. I mean, I mean, you see things that are so geared toward tourists and it's like, okay, you need to do, you know, this touristy thing and that touristy thing yeah. and so on and so forth. And you do have a mix in there because I mean, yeah. they are, but you hit a lot of the local stuff when a lot of stuff that I didn't know, uh, a lot on the Eastern shore and stuff like that. That's and it, and it, awesome. Just a very, very good book. I know Tim had read it earlier today. Yeah. I was in the Barnes and Noble and I was, uh, I was <laughs> arguing. I wasn't, I was talking with my wife on the phone <laughs> and as she was on a long diatribe about something i kind of drifted and looked right down and boom it was right there oh good the so one in annapolis i spent yeah this is barnes awesome. and noble so i, spent, I didn't know it was there yet they were planning uh, on it but. so i spent the next 10 minutes when she was talking just going through it and uh she said are you listening and i said yes <laughs> and i wasn't and i was listening i was reading the book it was fantastic awesome. it really was good Thank and i agree you. with john it was like I kind of, I actually had an interview the other day with Atlas Obscura mm-hmm. and they are a great group out of- I love, love, love that website. Oh my God, it's yeah. incredible. Mm-hmm. And they touch on a lot of the stuff that is, you know, kind of, woo. you know, it's, 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 you really have to dig to get to it and a lot of cool yeah. stuff. And they don't go to like the basic things that, that really are out in the open. So yeah. I like a mix of both, but there were some things in the book that I'm like, all right, I didn't think about that. I mean, you had McGarvey's in there. Of course you want to go to McGarvey's and-, and- that was the whole balance. I wanted it to be, I mean, A, only 100. Like I could have easily done 200. But I wanted it to, to speak to Annapolis and the Eastern Shore the, so locals would read it and go, oh, yeah, okay. Like, first you're going to go, is this in it? Um, and I wanted to have some surprises. And I wanted it, if I had some place that was covered, I wanted it to hopefully have something, a little different way of thinking about it or a little different thing that, that just might nudge you just peace i guess what was the impetus behind this why why did you decide to write a book why now and i've been a travel writer for 15 years and um tell us a little bit about that i was a magazine editor um i worked for primarily for wedding magazines wellness magazines and so i've traveled a lot i traveled about once a month for about 15 years and um still do it left publishing five years ago and when i moved back in january of 2018 I knew Annapolis because I grew up here and I, you know, come back summers and holidays and weekends. So you were from, you were from here. I was way from back, here, right, but right. I wanted to get, career, to get to know it better. In, exactly. In I wanted to go to New York City. I mean, you know, that's what you did. Desire to, <laughs> exactly. desire to survive and earn exactly. a living. But then you got um, bored and came back. You so know, you should do like Tim and I do. We don't earn anything. So it's. <laughs> um, and, I, and I, so it was a great, like, how do you re-get to know a place that you know so well, but is 
different because you're coming back to it as an adult and it's different. And so I write. That's what I do. Do you know what's interesting? Is I lived in New Mexico for about five years, which is a great place. Yeah. And there was a phenomenon there that everyone laughed about is that pe- people who grow up in New Mexico don't generally leave. You, mm-hmm. you, you see very few licensed places from New Mexico out and about because they stay there. Yeah. And beautiful. the joke was whenever they move somewhere... Within a year or two, they move back. And when they move back, they become completely obnoxious about their New Mexicanness. Yeah. And about, they're just like, this place is awesome. And, and they, they kind of are born again. Yeah. And I think that with maybe Annapolis, too, is that people grow up here and they love it. I mean, totally. what's not to? And they leave. When you come back, you're like, I love this place. It makes Absolutely. you realize how much you love it. I mean, I'm Absolutely. not native. I've been here for 20 some years, but. It's native enough. Ish. You're come here. Well, <laughs> in Eastport, if you weren't born in Eastport. Well, that's then, true. Yeah, they're a little yeah. snotty about that. Yeah, I'm yeah. calling you out. I, I was told in no uncircum circumstances at one point that you needed to be here at least 15 years before you could call yourself, say, hey, I'm from Annapolis. Yeah. I would, I think that's fair. And I was yeah. like, okay, so I crossed that bridge and, yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm okay. But John said this to me once, and not much that John says stick with me, but one of the things he said was, um, he challenged me, he's like, be a poor tourist in your own town. And I thought about that because I'm thinking, you know, Annapolis is really pretty small. And there were a lot of things that I hadn't ever done, and I still haven't. For yeah. example, coming down Route 2 across the Naval Academy, right at the bridge, I've never stopped at that World War II memorial. I passed it literally 300 times. And that was almost in the book. Um, my boyfriend actually was the one who pointed that out, and I met him there one day when he was on his way to work. And it's beautiful, and it was the same thing. And I was driven by. I had never stopped. And he's like, just stop. Get out of the car. Look and appreciate the beauty. And I did. In fact, I was on Reddit the other day, or probably a couple weeks ago, and I found a picture of... Goldie Hawn when she was like 17 because she grew up in Silver Spring. Yeah. And there's a picture of her sitting like posing at the uh, World War II Memorial uh, as a 17-year-old. And she was beautiful. I'm or, sure. She looked like Kate Hudson. And uh, I thought, oh, that's it's so iconic that yeah. Goldie Hawn got her picture taken. Yeah. That's- and I, I think there's something about, I mean, I've traveled a lot and I always look for places with a sense of place and a sense of uniqueness. And Annapolis, it just has it. There's no place else in the world. And it, it's very distinct. And Annapolitans and Eastern Shoreans um, are really proud of where they live. And they like, you have a relationship with your town in a way that New Yorkers do. Like, you have all yes. of New York people, but you also have New York that you're in a relationship with. I feel like the Chesapeake is that way. And, and it's special and it's cool. And it's kind of undiscovered on the national travel media i think people think we're not the south we're not the north and mm. we're not no you got the exactly. coolest flag well we do <laughs> <laughs> we, we do not actually they just rank the, the the u.s flags and we're in the top like four or five but we were not number one who was, who was number, number one? one i think it was alaska they That's got the bullshit. blue i thought so too what's it got like a fish and a bear no no it's got the it's got the blue background with like a single star and then texas was in there i think and new mexico i think we got beat up by new mexico texas, boring. texas is a pretty good one new mexico's and that's a good one but new i mexico think is, that's, that's the one with the like the, the red. zuni the zuni like, yeah, the, sun. yeah yeah the colors but, but ours is But no one good. loves their flag more than it's Marylanders true. do. It's true. And no one has their flag in as many crab shapes as we do uh-uh. or dog shapes. Or, That's true. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, so I think you're right. I mean, there's very, like if you look at like our sisters along the eastern seaboard, you know, it's Charleston, South Carolina, mm-hmm. and Newport. Yeah. You know, and so you have the northern, you have the and southern, Savannah. and then we are the middle child. Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't know. So Maybe Savannah. Yeah. The thing, I love Savannah. And the other thing that I love about Annapolis is... Yes, it's touristy. We all know. I didn't come down here last weekend because the boat show, you want to avoid it. But it's also a real, modern, thriving, living town. It's not just tourists. It's And, and despite how old it is, it's, um, it's neighborhoody. And I think that's rare. A lot of towns turn into kind of open air museums and this could, but it hasn't. And I think that's because of the well, people here. I think that's here. probably a part of the problem that Annapolis has is trying to figure out how to balance that yeah. whole tourist, tourist neighborhood thing. And well, that's- but you and I, and you know how I feel about it. I've always said that Annapolis is nostalgic for a time that never existed, that they've, they've built this sort of downtown that this is what Annapolis has been for years, and it hasn't. Yeah. It's not like that. And I'm constantly on the Eastport. Every home had a bucket like on the cover of this, and they were throwing out their, <laughs> sh- their shit in the street. Yeah. Pretty running. much, yeah. But, the, but if you're on the Eastport Forum, you have nothing but people in their 60s and 50s, 60s, and 70s just rambling on about how Annapolis wasn't the same as it was when they were kids, when everyone held hands well, you and danced. to buy and, houses, I guess, in Eastport I guess. Then, but, so. <laughs> but I got an argument with a woman recently. I said, do you think it was great for, for African-American people? Yeah, who had to sit? And absolutely. She was, and she said, in my Annapolis, there was no segregation. I'm like, your Annapolis must have been nice. I was just speaking with someone. I did the um, First Sunday Arts Festival the other day, and I was speaking with someone, and she went to high school at 
Annapolis High School. And she's like, oh, back when it was segregated. And right. you know, my mom remembers that. They were stationed here in the 60s. My dad taught history at the, at the Naval Academy, and she remembers that. Well, I was born in 1970, and this is when Maryland was Southern back in, in the 60s and 70s. And it kind of died off in the 70s where we stopped. And I remember growing up, and there were, it was after integration and stuff, but they still had the structure because I, I was born like five, six years after. Yeah. And I, you'd see like water fountains set up and all these all these leftovers. Yeah. I asked my mom about that. I'm like, because we, we were near Glen Echo where the, the famous, um, where the segregation, there was a big story where a whole team came down from New York and one of the kids was black and he couldn't get in, so none of them would go in. And when I asked my mom about that, I said, what was it like, segregation growing up? She goes, you never thought about it. She yeah. goes, not, you it wouldn't look just, around and think, this right. is wrong. She goes, that was just yeah. accepted. That's how it was. It's part of the book. I have two theaters that are in it, the Avalon in Easton and then the Prince in Chestertown. And both of those have these charming balconies. And when I was touring them, they're like, yeah, that was from segregation years. And they're restored. And of course, it's not that now. But it never occurred to me, oh, it's not a charming and and. At um, the Avalon, she's like, yeah, when we first were taking it over, you know, the ceiling's lower, the viewpoint's not as right. good, the seats aren't as comfortable, and that's legacy of segregation. To kill a uh, mockingbird, yeah. They're all up in the sort of gallery. talk about the segregation. I know uh, I did a podcast for my uh, legacy business series with Hardesty Funeral Homes, and they were the first integrated funeral home in the state. Wow. And they still had two separate doors, and they're still there down in Galesville, one for the blacks and one for the whites. Yeah. And it was just amazing that they – and they were like, no, we will take care of anybody that comes in. Which but at the time, it was – as you know, it, it had should to be, be segregated and this is and – And having our first gay pride parade this year was so fantastic and the energy on the street was amazing. It was packed. It was such a great turnout and um, – It's hotter yeah. now. It was a little hot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I sat in the shade and had a beer. I was good. <laughs> in the Avalon, talking about that, that is one of the most underrated gems in the state. The, the acts they get at the Avalon, which is really in yeah. the sticks. I mean, Easton is a charming town. Yeah. But it's 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 out there, you know. But yeah. it is. They get some great acts out they there. Do. Like Robert Cray was out there. And I'm a big Robert Cray fan. We and saw it, it's NRBQ. A great venue. Yeah. Um, which was a fantastic show. And to see it in that little space. Yeah. I love NRBQ. Um, there's there's awesome. an offside. It's very 80s. <laughs> I've been fans from forever. Yeah. So how did you weed through all of them? I mean, you came down to a hundred. I mean, what what didn't what, what didn't make the book that you thought should like that goes in a hundred more things to do in Annapolis um, before you die? The crab hash at Iron Rooster. I never had that. Oh, it's so good. What is it? It's it's hash and it's got crab meat and potatoes and it is just delicious. Oh, that sounds stupid. So yeah, so that's one of the things. I'll go. It gets so crowded there that I'll go on a like a Tuesday at eleven because that's the only time you can get in with a line. Right. So I wanted it. My, my parameters were Annapolis, and if it was something like Homestead Gardens, which isn't technically Annapolis, but it's enough of Annapolis, and sure. my mom goes all there, there all the time, so um, that fit. But I didn't get down to Galesville because that was getting into a whole other section. Right. Um, yeah, draw the line somewhere. It should say Maryland's Eastern Shore, but that didn't fit on the cover. Um, it's only Maryland's Eastern Shore. I don't get into Virginia or, or Maryland's Western Shore. Um, I wanted things that felt unique that were either created here or represented something here or um, wouldn't be the same if they were done anywhere else. We talked about that when we talked about restaurants. And I think yeah. John and I... I could add a hundred restaurants. That was hard. And we had, we had, not a debate, but we had kind of a challenge to people saying that we were talking about the level of cuisine in Annapolis mm -hmm. and where we, where we stood. And our question was, what restaurant would you drive from Baltimore or DC to Annapolis? And the two criterion that we had was it can't be because of the view. So you can't, yeah. then it's yeah. gotta be. And it and can't be, be here for something else. Oh, and, it yeah. and it can't be. Eat and leave. And it can't be a steakhouse. Yeah. Because for that reason, although Lunas is my favorite restaurant. It's I, great. I love Lunas. But you can have a steakhouse anywhere. So I reluctantly disqualified them from that because you wouldn't drive from D.C. or Baltimore to Lunas because you have some other fantastic yeah. steakhouses there. But it's not wood. And I, well, I, I love them Lunas. Are wood so I say yeah. They're my favorite. Um, Sailor Oyster Bar, I think, is a total gem. Their menu is unlike any menu I've ever seen. They're so, so nice. they don't have a kitchen. It's Exactly. But they <laughs> have great be, food. Go figure. Um, what so do they do? They just run this stuff down or? They have, a, they have a torch. They got warmers. Oh, do they? Yeah. I but I that's never... the whole thing. They don't have a kitchen, but they have great food. Huh. So um, so that's definitely one. I I mean, traveling the world, I would never eat 
a crab cake outside of Maryland. And I have been to so many fancy restaurants where they're like, oh, no, trust me, ours is good. And they're just not. I mean, I would I would go. I would drive to Edgewater. I, I would I, drive I'm a believer. I mean, you know, you, you, you don't go down to, no offense to Brian Bolter, but you don't go down to Ribbit Wine Bar and get New Orleans beignets. Exactly. They're, okay, no, they're not. That says Grumps has a pretty mean beignet, they're, I got to say. They're good. They're good, but they're not. Yeah. They're not a New Orleans beignet. Yeah. No. You're not going to get a Maryland crab cake. You're not going to get a Philly cheesesteak yeah. someplace. Now, yeah. Phillips is coming in, evidently. I saw that. Now, here's, and John and I talked Didn't about this. Didn't it used to be Phillips way back in the day? I feel like I went to yeah, Homecoming there. It was. Well, I don't know if, I mean, I don't know if it was that long ago, but it was around 80s? where the other side of Ego 90s? Alley. Um, yeah, where the, where the yeah. we call it the fake Annapolis Yacht Club. Was when the <laughs> right, Yacht Club right, burned right, down. Right, right, right. And my, and my problem with Phillips is they have the Indonesian crab meat there. Yeah. Now, John said they're going to be bringing crabs in off the boat. The, the, Which is a cool concept, but how many crabs will they actually bring off the boat? I don't know. We'll see. Well, they're, they're I, mean, I, always off. Thought, I always thought that, that the old Phillips building would be good for Cantlers to be able to just have a second location here because Cantlers is a little bit difficult for tourists to get to. Absolutely. And and you could, yeah. you could do the, you know, the pike market, throw the fish type thing where you could bring them over in a speedboat Unload them onto the little waterman's yeah. boat and get the old, you know, the old skinny guy in the dunger. He's yeah. coming out and hand a bushel and type of thing. So I think that's similar to what Phillips may be looking to do. Well, we have, and hopefully they're going to work with what, like Wild Country or some local. Absolutely, and they know they're crabs, so it's awful. We don't have, for being in the heart of crab country, we don't have many crab houses in and around Annapolis. We have Cantlers. Which, you know, I love Cantler's, but it is, the tourists found it years ago. Absolutely. That's a big thing. Mike's, Mike's is the local spot. Mike's is good. Yeah. yeah but that, that's pretty far out of town. South. See, to me, you can't be a crab house unless you're touching the water. It's just one of my little See, see that, I, I, I agree with you there, Maybe. Susan. I think that, that, you know, if you're going to be a crab place, you need to be, you need to be there on the water for some reason. Yeah. But we, we have you a dream. I mean, you hear, need to be able to go by boat. Not that well, I have I hear, a boat, I, but if I did, I I hear Edgewater Restaurant has the best crab cakes around. They're good. Yeah. Um, and it's and it's and Lunas again. old Lunas school, does. untouched, you know, and that's what I love about Cantlers. I mean, Cantlers gets gets a rap just because so many tourists have discovered it. But go off season, and the vibe is great, and it's local, and it's historic, and it's there's no place quite like this it. This to me is the best time of year. I, I don't go yeah. during the summer. I love getting now crabs. All fat. Yeah, exactly. Fat October fats. crabs to me, it's a fall thing for me. Yeah. I love that. Well, this this time of the year, and we're recording this in early October. Is is great because the boat shows are winding down. Yeah, and we get get the city back for a while. Yeah, until until the legislature comes back in. Yeah, to a degree. And I know that I've I've talked to one restaurateur, and I'm not going to name him, but he said, you know, in in February, if you come and eat at my restaurant and sit in the window, I'll probably pay for your dinner. It's that tough. Oh, it's, it, it can yeah. be that tough. And he says, if you smile, I might buy you a dessert. Awesome. <laughs> Good to know. And, Sit and, in windows but it, and but smile. But it was, it was all about talking about what, you know, the events that the Downtown Annapolis Partnership puts on, the yeah. Midnight Madnesses and the um, yeah. you know, the Dining Under the Stars, which is the summer thing and everything which is else in the which is in your book. Yeah. But it helps. I mean, it's it's just every Absolutely. little bit. Absolutely. And it's, you know. And I'm concerned what's going to happen when they redo that parking garage on Main Street. That's going to be, because parking is the whole issue, you know? It's, they Well, they should have done something when they had the chance a couple of years ago where the school was, but that's uh, former Mayor Cohen couldn't get out of his, uh, couldn't get out of a wet paper bag that <laughs> during that time. But, um, but this book is laid out really well. I mean, you've got food and drink, which is probably your biggest thing. You've got music and entertainment, and we're no, there's no shortage of that here mm-hmm. in the area as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Um, sports. Fact, I wish people would utilize that more. Like if you look at the Summer Garden Theater and the Colonial Players, I just I, – I think I've gone to a few things there and they're spectacular. I don't know. Well, if, I mean, I yeah. mean we've, got, we've got a really good – you know, I – Annapolis has always had a great music scene. I mean I grew up with HFS and independent radio and it helped – Oh, the old HFS. Yeah, yeah and it helped shape me. And the fact that R&R is still independent and, yeah, the playlist has changed a bit, but – you know, that live music is supported here, and the bands that come through Rams Head, just because of the relationships that they've had with them over the years. It's one of the best ven- is, small venues on the East absolutely, Coast. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I was thinking more comedy. That's my only complaint. They get some good people, but. Yeah, no. I don't okay. necessarily like the sitting all the time. See a rock band, sometimes you want to stand and dance. So. Uh, yeah, but, well, they, they've lightened up on that. I mean, they're they did. Which is me, good. Which is, they, they have some shows actually that are dancing shows. Yeah. Which is kind well, we of cool saw Tito Puente Jr. Uh, last month, and the place just exploded. People were dancing everywhere. Who yeah. was it? 
Tito Puente Jr. Oh, it, well, you could not dance. It was <laughs> awesome. Not, not dancing. It Tito was Puente. incredible. The whole I place bet. just exploded. I, just well, yeah, I, I love that they've now backed off on neighbors with me. my good friend in Miami. Oh, down in Florida. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, Tito Puente Jr. lives down the street. Oh, he was, he was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Small world. <laughs> but they, uh, and I love that they backed off on the photography thing. And I remember I was- Because show, they used to yell at you. I'm trying to remember who oh. it was, but it was, um, it's a movie star that's singing with Chris Christopherson? Oh, with his daughter. No, he was, he's a movie star singing. I can't remember. It was Kevin. Kevin Bacon? No, it wasn't Bacon. Paul. I can't remember. Who it was. But anyhow, yeah. they, they used to have a woman running around in the ram's head saying, no, put your camera down. No, to, no don't take the pictures. Don't take the pictures. Uh, and he was, uh, he, all of a sudden he stood up. He said, wait a minute. Whoa, no, 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 no. I'm starting this new band. Uh, Kenny, it was Kenny Loggins, actually. Oh, was. okay. He says, no, I'm, I'm working with this. You know this new band, man. I we need we need you no know, Instagram us, awesome. Facebook us, and yeah. the whole place erupted with the flashes and and the poor woman. I felt bad for her because she looked so defeated. Yeah, you well, know, it was like you know, <laughs> the artist you speaks. Three hundred people there, but you know the book is great. I mean, you talk about shopping and you talk about culture, you talk about um, sports, food, entertainment, and I think it's uh, and and you really hit it all. Thanks. How did you start? Did you just have like. You just had a blank piece of paper or a big well, chalkboard and just started? The, the publisher has other books like this. They have like New York is one, um, Denver is one. So I had heard of the publisher through a friend of mine and reached out to them and said, you need a book on Annapolis. And yeah. actually he had said, oh, someone had reached out to me, but she lives in Napa or something. I'm like, well, you can't have someone from Napa writing a book about Annapolis because we know and we're going to know True. if it's not um, – Spot on. Just like, go, we'll, we'll write a box book, book about Napa then. Fine. We'll exactly. See how they like it. Yes. Well, I, as I read through, I mean, I've got two things. Okay. That I'm, that I'm gonna, I I'm know, gonna but one of them is going to be. I'm going to bitch here. Yeah, well, we'll get into that. But you, you said, you said, like, be a midi. And nobody calls them midis. My dad did. He didn't go to the academy, did he? Nobody taught at the academy. Taught at the academy. And my uh-huh. brother went to the academy. Uh-huh. Um, so to me, it's ask, an, an affectionate. Ask, ask, ask your brother if, if, they, if they're referred to as midis. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure not. But yeah, it's a, you so know, and it's a playoff out. of play Misty for me. So oh, it was a little okay. Johnny okay. Mathis All right. reference. I didn't, I didn't pick up on yeah. that. And then, and I was then, thinking about the movie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> with, with the stalker and the you know Clint Eastwood. Oh yeah, and that too because you could stalk a midi. I guess I don't yeah, know. right. And then John you know, has your inclusion of Davis's in here. Not so much that Davis's inclusion included because yeah. I, I was talking. Oh, about I didn't see that. Is this going to set me off? And we are exactly on the same page. But this is not a dive bar. Ebb tide. So I've had, I know, Ebb Tide's great. So I've had this discussion. To me, dive bar is a huge compliment. And to me, a dive bar is a place that you can go in smelly and dirty right off a boat or right after, you know, working in the yard or whatever. Or you can pop in when you've been at some stuffy event and you're all dressed up, but you just want to slump and sit and relax. So mm-hmm. it's, it's a compliment for sure. But- and, and in a town where there's so many higher end dining and you know ten dollar glasses of wine the fact that you have something that's so great and so local that you can just dive right into it um i stand by so, it so food food doesn't play into oh dive dive bars ha- can have food and their food's great i had the barbecue but, I mean, sandwich I mean, the, the other the, night the style of food what was it that you said tim you, you a dive bar can't have i'm looking for it now like, you, you can't have a salad special that's where here's, so what happened or is, you don't need a steak knife like I, if you eat everything with your fingers you're good so i go into reddit a lot it's one of my bad habits one of my many bad habits and there's a reddit subreddit for annapolis and oh, someone said yeah well yeah so uh some people <laughs> get not. on there and uh, someone said something about dive bars and they were saying that you know and this is a pet peeve of mine and they said something about davis being a dive bar and i said it's not a dive bar the only dive bar in town that's left, and there was two of them at one point. One was where the CNC Liquors was, yeah, because there was a bar that fit precisely four people with a nudie calendar on the wall, and then Ebb Tide, and I, I got just everyone was, was kind of flying to me. They said, "Well, it is a dive bar." I'm like, "It's not. They have like their spe- they have like a homemade beef stroganoff, and they have a wine list. They have you know, yeah, so it's red and white." So the guy actually said, "He said, look, old timer, I'm 49." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. Look at here, old timer. Yeah, and they did. They said, "Well, the, the, the definition has changed." I'm like, "Well," and, and that's, that's when I got on my whole millennial thing. Uh, yeah, but the, but I think that I think that that's true. And and um, dive bar used to be, I think, you know, a place that you wouldn't go into after dark unless you knew someone, or you know, right. it's certainly a place that yeah. a woman would not go into on her own. And the blue oyster. I think it's more. It's just it's casual and relaxed, and it's unfussy, and it's. 
Yeah, a good dive bar, you could be sitting next to a millionaire, you could be sitting next to a homeless person, and you don't care, and everyone's getting along, watching the game, or eating the crab top pretzels. Well, I was talking to Kevin Colbeck from Davis's the other day, and, and I, I did mention- I listened. I, I, did mention <laughs> I did mention that he was a dive bar. He said, hey, I'll take it. Yeah. And, and again, he thought the, uh, the dirty- uh, you know, the dirty floor and the concrete yeah. floor and stuff. You know, and the bathrooms are tiny. Yeah. That's another, to me, a dive right. bar, just, you know. Now, my only problem, I love Davis's. I don't want them to yeah. think I don't love them. No, absolutely. The only thing I don't like is that they're, and this is my problem with Eastport, because I always pick on Ward 1 for being snotty and just, they don't want anything to change. They don't like anybody except for Ward 1. I will pick on Eastport now because Eastport is very clicky. That and and I love Davis's. I got to keep saying that. But when you go to Davis's, you kind of sit down, everyone kind of stops and stares like, that's Kevin's seat. Well, oh, you're like, is you're Kevin like, here? You're, well, you no. Know, but. I haven't found that, but that was a really, I think, uh, maybe an advantage on coming back. I didn't have preconceived notions. I don't, you know, right. I went to high school here, but I don't, except for my boyfriend who I went to high school with and a couple of other people that I'm in touch with, it's all a sea of new faces. So I didn't have that where uh, every every place is new to be, but also incredibly familiar. The first time I walked into Davis, I felt like uh, those guys from Animal House walking into the Black Bar where Otis stay and they might as play. <laughs> yeah. You know, and they stopped like, playing. It was like, you know, the, the band yeah. stopped. They all looked around. And like, yeah. Like, what is, we what is, are going to you know, die. But it's, it's funny. You talk about the um, uh, next to a millionaire and a homeless guy. St- st- did shots and beers with Steve Forbes at the ebb tide. There you go. I mean, you know. Yeah. And, and, and Which I was the is only awesome. person in there that knew who, and who the hell he was. And that's way off the beaten path for Steve Forbes. I mean, just to be the ebb tide. Like, I'm really to me, upset that's, the closing. It was. To me, that's more, well, it's not closing. Well, I know, but it's not going to be the same. Yeah. You know, I think, I think that Now Jen, it's like one of those eSport people who are now complaining about what's, you know, is but, better. But, but Jen knows her neighborhood and loves her neighborhood Jen, and yeah. loves that spot. So and she's I talking think, about Jen from uh, Smokehouse. From Smokehouse, Because yeah. they're going to, they're so, they I didn't buy if, it, but they're going to take over yeah. the lease. I think if anybody will do it right, I think she absolutely they're will. They're changing the name, right? Dark Horse? I don't. So it could be. <sighs> That's what I heard. When I talked to her, it was still like... I love Eptide. Yeah, yeah. I, hadn't, I hadn't heard they were changing the name. I mean, she said that yeah. it was going to put maybe another window in, brighten it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, which degree, I could but see. I think, I think the menu is going to pretty much... Maybe improved a little bit. Those no, burgers I never go are the there best burgers. <laughs> oh, those <laughs> burgers, burgers are the best. I just go to sit at the bar late at night and gab. Oh, the so. burgers are the best in town. Hands down. Well, the one thing okay. I love about the Ebb Tide is that it, at, Let's it's always at 12.15 because there's a big rush yeah. of people from the downtown bars. Absolutely. It must be 12.15. It is on my way home. I've been part of that rush before when yeah. I'm being dropped <laughs> off. Yep. Everyone meets at the Ebb Tide. <laughs> yeah. It's, I live in uh, Rundle on the Bay. So, I mean, there of course, go. I got to go I on I love that neighborhood. Window. That's a pretty neighborhood. Yeah, it's awesome. Right how how did there. you get into all of these? I mean, one thing that, and, and I've never heard of it, and it was, and I want to try it, is the... Um, Barbara's? Barbara's on the Bay. Barbara's on the yeah. Bay. In this little town that I never knew existed. Betterton. What a great name. Betterton. Betterton. Where is that? Betterton is? No. It's, I don't know, but apparently it's near water. Yeah. They, it's <laughs> it's right where the Sassafras comes into the Bay. So north. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's on that where they there are lots of don't build the bridge signs. Yeah. Um, and I, I so I had, you know, I did a lot of sleuthing. I love a road trip. So I did a lot of driving around. My boyfriend and I love to do that. And we went to Dixon's furniture auction which he told me about and um finally went and it was amazing and then we're like let's go explore some more and that had been on my list to check out and the really fun thing about this book as well is that i didn't have i wasn't beholden to anybody nobody knew i was coming nobody was offering comps Comps to be in it it was just if if i like it and it fits and it works it's in if it doesn't it doesn't and her I had um, a good meal on, on char grilled oysters were awesome and i liked her story and i liked the view and i liked the fact that it was back in the day one of these towns that was serviced by ferry and um it's actually one of the first places where women voted there's a little town that you pass on the way to a so smaller that's where it town started, huh? yeah Man. i know <laughs> i know and of the women that voted i think i i don't know if this i memorized but like Three of them were African American, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. It just shows. I mean, that's so what this state and area is about. You know, it's so. funny. I think we look at. Yeah, you know, I, I get on the people on the Eastport Forum about how they're always complaining about how things today are much worse than they were when they're growing up and everything was awesome. But then yeah. I'm on the Montgomery County Forum on Facebook, and it's the same thing. People yeah. just lamenting how much better. And I kind of share in that because yeah. I go back, and it doesn't resemble anything where I grew up if with. If I could go back in time, I would get Machoy and chicken back in the market house. Uh, That's my biggest thing that I miss. But if you go to the eastern shore, 
I mean, those people's lives were completely disrupted in the 50s when the when the Bay Bridge was built. Oh, completely. And I mean, yeah. even now, I mean, there's so many gems. I mean, the, the Eastern Shore has been very slow to change yeah. even now. Uh, you know, people are creeping over to East uh, or to um, not to, not as far. I mean, maybe as far as Eastern, but they're going, you know, to Queenstown and none of that stuff was there when we were Absol- growing up. No, when you, you, you went, drove went, to Ocean City, stopped for gas in Easton and then kept And when you went over the way. Narrows, that was all marsh. Yeah. Now it's all, you know, you feel like you're old. Those were all fields. Yeah. yeah. But um, I feel bad for those people to an extent because they had the lives that they pretty much wanted. Although, you know, it's a very poor yes, area. Exactly. But but now there are, you find so many really cool gems over there. Like for for a while there. John and I knew about this place over in Graysonville that had, that was um, was La Piazza, which I thought was some of the best pizza is that in the Maryland. Wi- is that the wine bar? No, no, no. It was a, okay. it was a hole in the wall pizza place, and it, unfortunately the the old guy owned it. He died yeah. a couple yeah. years ago, so it's not the same. But you know, when you find a gem like that, yeah. you're like, how did people not know about this? Yeah, that's the wine incredible. bar over there in Stevensville is changing names too. Okay, was that was uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but that's um, right there in the middle of the little town. Yeah, exactly. Rustica, La Rus- Rus- Rustico, could be. I think is what it was. They, they, somebody else has bought it, and they're, they're excited about it. Mm-hmm. So, I thought it was pretty good the way it was. Yeah. So, so you could. So, why did you stray over to the Eastern Shore too? Because I didn't, I didn't want a hundred in Annapolis. Um, I love a road trip. That's to me. That's where we all go when we're looking for something else. I wanted that part of the world to be covered as well because there are just great gems, and to me, it, it all speaks to the theme of the Bay of the history culture. I think there's much more of a connection between Annapolis and, and Easton or Berlin or Chestertown than there is between Annapolis and D.C. Uh, with the traffic on the Bay Bridge lately. <laughs> well, that's true. But emotional. There's an emotional tie. You know, all of those, all of our founding fathers, a lot of them had plantations out on the Eastern Shore and would come in. And that's why our legislative session is still so short because it was just their break from Farmers. farming. Well, I'll tell you what, since uh, we're all Annapolitans here and the people listening pretty much know these things, why don't we talk, we'll take a short break and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about the Eastern Shore and you can tell us about the gems that are over there. Okay. When a ring from the United States Naval Academy comes into Zachary's for a center stone, it always makes us wonder, where's this one going? Where's this one been? A nuclear sub in the North Atlantic? A carrier deck in the South Pacific. The moon? 52 astronauts are Academy graduates. From Iwo Jima to Okinawa. Corregidor to the Coral Sea. Midway to the Persian Gulf. Congress to the White House. These rings go where America goes. 73 that went to war were awarded the Medal of Honor. But wherever they go, wherever they may serve, Our admiration goes with them. Zachary's. Online at Zachary'sJewelers.com. More than a jewelry store, a jeweler. Here's to the teacher who spends her weekend helping children who need a little extra attention. To the soldier who missed the birth of his baby while serving overseas. To the EMT working full time and taking night classes. To the police officers and firefighters working long hours away from their families to keep our families safe. Here's to you, our hometown heroes. I'm Alan Hyatt, chairman and president of Severn Bank, and we know there are many heroes among us. Men and women who serve without expecting anything in return which is why we're honored to offer our Hometown Heroes program to educators, law enforcement officers, firefighters, first responders, healthcare workers, and military personnel. Whether you're opening a checking account or buying a new home, we're here to give back to you. Learn more about our Hometown Heroes program at SeverinBank.com. Severn Bank, here with you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. All right, we're back here with Susan Moynihan, who is the author of 100 Things to Do in Annapolis and the Eastern Shore Before You Die. Yes. I am 57, so I've got He's a old. couple more years. I'm working my way through your list of things. Awesome. You know, we were just during the break, we were talking about. I was just talking about how my brother's been everywhere in the world and how he says that there's not anything that has been untouched by tourism or commercialism. And Susan's point was, but, you know, there's things there to be discovered, you know, yeah. that, that it's not, I mean, people want to keep things, they want to visit it and they want to preserve it. So it's the way that they want it to be, but everyone else wants to see it. And I think yeah. when I was saying before that the Eastern shore was kind of isolated from us before the Bay Bridge, but now there 
are a lot of cool things and it brought a lot of things to them that they needed well and and it's how you know it's how towns get restored and people get to go back and and live there and be in these they don't have to leave a small town and go to a big city to make a living if if technology and things are impacting they can live and work where they are and easton was like that i mean easton was pretty run down and over the last 20 years easton has really built up but not in a bad way i mean someone who who grew up there too berlin is a cool town that Um, was voted like the coolest town in america several years ago it is there's um forbes or content asked for somebody one of those yeah And, and it's it's i think relatively inexpensive because people would build up at the beach mm-hmm. um great brewery there great food scene there and and the young families that are moving in are are reclaiming it and they're not tearing it down and they're not building condos they're Cause those houses are spectacular houses. yeah they're beautiful have you ever been to a uh, snow hill which is the, the I, yeah my I, god I that's did. a great little it's town gorgeous. that is um right near acetique it's about uh or on the other side near pokemoke state it's near park pokemoke. And, yeah. it's near the otters at um the discovery center which is in the book it is it's beautiful yeah that is a stunning little town yeah, it is there's a great um paddle there that you can do on that river are you about 50 50 on the eastern shore in annapolis it's a little more annapolis i was trying to have it be 50 50 it's probably 60 okay. 40 did you find that the eastern shore was a different world i think there's a common thread that goes through it um i think there's there's a love of land and the region and the water i think that there's a common history our roots go back so deep i think there's a tolerance there that you don't find in other sort of equally isolated places farther south i mean it's always been this this cross ground um, between north and south and so it, it has this you know people there are super educated and and know what they're talking about and um even on smith island i i was that was a highlight to get to go out there. And then just in the way the timing of the book was, we went in December and nobody goes to Smith Island right, in December. Right. So there wasn't a lot open, but um, the woman at the Smith Island quilt shop came and met me. She had just known through a friend that we were coming out and I thought that she would like say, hi, come to my quilt shop. And, um, and that wasn't the case at all. She's like, well, let me show you around and, and put us in her car and, you know, it didn't have a seat belt, but you don't who cares cause you're on Smith Island. And, right. um, was so welcoming and so kind and the smith island bakery had just there's one that just reopened on island and and they're there about they want people to come and and see this beauty and and support it they don't want too many to come and they want if you come like be respectful it's a dry island you know don't go and be drinking your six pack of beer on the front porch but if you bring it and you want to drink it in your hotel room then that's fine Maryland, for being so geographically small as it is, is so varied, more yeah. so than I think a lot of other states. I think, you know, for Western Maryland is essentially Pennsylvania. Yeah, it's a whole other world. So everything west of Route 15, yeah. you know, it's, I think that's Western Maryland. And when you get to Garrett County, that's complete. I think like that, that is Pittsburgh. Yeah. But Central Maryland is so transient now. Uh, when I grew up, it wasn't, but now it is. And that's where all the money is. And there's nothing but farms out in Howard County, which is now the richest county in maybe the country, but certainly wow, in Maryland. That's crazy. But Southern Maryland, like Charles County and parts of the Eastern Shore, it's like being in the South. Like you go to Charles County, yeah, it is which South. I know is not in your book, but you go there, their barbecue is fantastic. You get grits, you get sweet yeah. tea. And I'm like, is this really 40 minutes from Annapolis? And it's the real deal too. Yeah. It's not like this put on, like they're, they're wannabes. Yeah. That's still the touch of the South. But and, I mean, we are below the Mason Dixon line. I always swore after I left New York City, I will never live above the Mason Dixon line again. We're and, the Jan and Brady it's... of, I mean, we're not North, we're not South. We have, t- you know, what did, what did Kennedy say? We were, we we're, uh, we have Southern efficiency and Northern charm. You know, it was just Our that. Southern charm and Northern efficiency. No, no, it was. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. It, it was not a compliment. Gotcha. Oh. But, and that was DC. Yeah. But I mean, when I was growing up, Maryland was Southern and I, I interviewed John Shields who it does the Chesapeake cookbook. You know, you've mm-hmm. seen all that. And he was talking about these, these traditional Maryland cuisines that are unfortunately kind of dying and Absolutely. Maryland fried chicken and yep. that's kind of dying. Yep. Stuffed and ham. Yeah. We, we talked extensively about that. Yeah. I've never heard of that, but that's a Southern Maryland thing. But you go to the Eastern shore and these things are not just alive because they, they don't, they don't say this is our culture. It's just what they yeah. do. It's People just, eat, still eat muskrat. It's a, it's a traditional food and it? it is muskrat. Have you tried it? No, I have not. I, I don't think I need to. <laughs> but you know, they have snapping turtle soup at Hunter's Tavern, which is. I've had that. Great. Yeah. It tastes Fine. like yeah, yeah. It tastes like what you think it, it would. Like turtle soup. Yeah, so, so this is awesome. Yeah. Like, is it really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> now I've said I've had it. That's all I really need. Yeah. Now, what are your favorite things on the Eastern Shore? Um, I mean, Dixon's Furniture Auction is fantastic. It happens every Wednesday at 9 a.m. It's been going on for 50 years, and it's where all of the people who have vintage stores around the tri-state come, and it's a live auction. You follow this auctioneer around, and he's being pushed around on this cart, and you have a paddle, and you try and outbid the Baltimore hipsters for the mid-century modern stuff. <laughs> That's what beards. I did. Uh-huh. Um, but when we were there, another guy found that these chairs, and he thought they were probably from the 1600s, and people know what they're looking for, and it's a, it's a hodgepodge. You never know what you're going to get. It's a lot of estate sale stuff, but I just, I loved that it exists. I love that it's so and the exactly was, how it's been. He says Wednesdays? Yeah, it's on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Don't tell anyone. Shh. Okay. What, what <laughs> so? Edit that out? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got your different things. What's your, give me your food, your favorite food place of all, all your list. Uh, I love Sailor Oyster Bar. Okay. Ah, Oyster Bar. I think it's great. Okay, that's fine. What's your favorite music and entertainment place? Ram's Head. Okay. I'm there a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sports and recreation? I think Schooner Woodwind is a beautiful, beautiful part of this town. And I bring my friends when they come to visit and seeing their face when they get out on the bay for the first time. And I get to point out like Bay Ridge, I'm the neighborhood back behind there. It's magic. And, and they do it right. And not many people know this. So I guess we talk about it a lot. But it was in the Wedding Crashers. That was the Schooner Woodwind. Woodwind. Mm-hmm. Oh, you didn't tell, oh, so I'm telling you something you didn't you know? You are. That's right. The scene when they're out there with um, Christopher Walken. And gotcha. he's like, oh, my boy, come take the take the helm. And she was there underneath there uh, steering. She was steering. Awesome. <laughs> because he says, I act. I don't I yeah, don't gosh. drive boats, he said. Yep. Uh, for culture and history, what's your, what's, what's your best tour? I was, culture history thing. I was really surprisingly taken with London Town. I had never been. That was a place okay, that's really sort of cool. on your list, but you never get to it. And right. it's over um, right south, outside Edgewater. Sounds like yeah. a uh, like a fifth grade field trip. Exactly. But the cool thing about it is the main tavern there. Um, the director described it as you know Annapolis, the historic homes here were where the millionaires would have lived, but this is where we would have lived. And the the old tavern there was from the 1850s through I think the like 1960s was a a poor folks home. So it was never torn like down. House? Yeah. yeah. And it was never altered. And so most of these old buildings have been torn down or they've been turned into private mansions. And the fact that you can go in and and see it. And it's got a great spot on the shore. I just find it really evocative. Have you ever been to the Edgewater restaurant that's right next to yeah. it? Yeah. They have they have great crab cake. It's an old person restaurant. So you go it's in. It's on like, my list of best crab cakes. And their crab cakes are phenomenal. Yeah. And they do this thing where they take a, a potato and they, they peel it and they boil it. And then they deep fry that sucker. Oh, that sounds I, good. I went to, I thought, I'm looking at the menu. I'm like, this is bizarre. And they're like, do you want it? I'm like, yeah, I want it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take two. I know. It was my heart burst later in yeah. the day, but it was so good. Yeah. That's funny. I know you mentioned a bunch that, of the tours that are in here too. And I know you, I know you've picked up a couple of watermark tours and the walking tours mm-hmm. and the ghost tours and stuff like that. One I think that you missed, unless I missed it, is their architect, architects tour. Which is watermark does, which right. is super cool. It's, I didn't get into specifics because I wanted, like, okay. if somebody was coming, they only offer it twice a year. Okay. Um, but the James Bryce House, what is really cool going on right there now, and it's a three-year project so people can do it, they're restoring that house. Um, it's being led by a restorer from Williamsburg, and you can go in and tour with a hard hat and see it under yeah, redevelopment, right. which is Peeling pretty back the rare. Layers of yeah, the and while they're, while they're working on it, and you just you don't get a chance to see a museum in the making. No, without a doubt. Shopping and fashion. Um, hats in the Belfry. I bought my first hat there in the 80s. And it's still, it's a mainstay. I love that it's in business. I love how enthusiastic they are about hats. I love the fact that our town supports a really cool hat store. I just pictured a hat store in the 80s. All the hats look like Molly Ringwald and Pretty in Pink. A little bit. Was, yeah. yeah, mine was blue. It was pretty much that. Or Blossom. Oh, wait. Well, we, we've got Blossom the croquet. Blossom in the 90s, but yeah. We have the croquet match. We have to have a hat it's store. It's true. And, and I love that they change it out um, by season. And I love that you go in there and depending on... You know, what's, you know, if it's Easter bonnets or if it's derby hats or if it's winter hats or trilbies or I just think it's a great spot. It always makes me happy. Guys can't pull off hats anymore. Oh, yeah, they can. I don't know. Like my old man, my, well, my grand, not my dad, but my, my grandfather's, they always wore the hat with like the little feather. Not, mm-hmm. not, not like the German thing, like with the big, but they had like, yeah. the little. Yeah. And like in movies in the old time, remember? They're just yeah. like, you know, all right, Muggsy in the car. Hold on, I gotta get my hat. Jack <laughs> Friday's hat. You gotta get my hat, you know? I think, I think hats. And, and I asked them, um, I asked one of the shop people like 
you know, hats in business on business. And she said, hats go in and out, but there are always hat people. And I love being in a world They'll where there are always John's. hat people. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Also, hobo bags. I'm carrying one right now. I love, love, love their bags. She lives in my neighborhood. Tony Wright. She's so good. Her designs are great. Now, are they? Are, I, I know they're, they're local. I mean, is that just a one-off store? You can I mean, see them in, oh, in Nordstrom. Yeah. You can see them in high-end high I mean, places. They're, they're based, but this is their only store. Yeah. Right. And, and they're, they're Yeah. She designs in the studio upstairs and, um, and and... I carry this bag everywhere, and I've had people. I've run into it. I I was in Maui at the shops of Ilea, and they had my bag that I had bought here. I'm like, oh, that's Hobo. I got, I got I, it I from know, the source. I know where that is. Exactly. I, 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 rec- I yeah. recognize it. That's great. And you say, well, I was looking on the website, and you were talking about your favorite things, and one of which is driving the back roads near Salisbury, searching out the old Mason-Dixon marker. That was so much fun. That was probably my favorite thing that I did. I was with my sister-in-law, and... We were looking on, I'm a huge history buff, obviously, probably if you've read the book, and there weren't any clear markers as to where it was looking up different sources online. And so we're driving around thinking, maybe it's here and it's supposed to be in this town. And and then finally we found it and it was like finding Mecca. And we stood and <laughs> looked at it, took pictures and hopped from north to south and then went on our, our merry you know, way. It's funny. <laughs> it's, we used to have a sign until, I think probably until Governor Hogan, that said that, that like we came down Route 70 and it said Mason-Dixon line. And they took that quietly down. And huh. I always wondered if it was that stigma that they want to kind of raise maybe. or maybe I'm reading into they, it. They, and a lot they, of them have they, been they stolen. They one up on 83. Yeah, not on 70. They took that down about uh, five, six years ago. There's a lot of them more north, but this one had to be on the eastern shore. And I think it's the only one that, that I mean, it's the only one we could find. Well, my boss grew up in Hyattsville. Oh. And he took me to his his home homestead, like where they lived, right right on the DC line, like right on the DC line. Mm-hmm. And his mother still lived there. And he he goes, oh look at this. We walked over to like this little copse of bushes, you know, just like this old log and stuffing. And he kicked away the the leaves and stuff. And there's this little stone marker, which is and amazing. That, and then apparently, there's only eight of them yeah. that designate the DC line. Yeah, there's only like eight, and they they're looking for the others. I'm like. Is this one of the ones they found? And he just shrugged. He goes, I don't know. I'm like, I think you have one they don't know about. Yeah. Does it want you guard it. Yeah. But uh, um, it's still there. Another really cool thing is the Harriet Tubman Byway. Harriet Tubman. Oh, that's um, awesome. The Park Service did a huge museum that opened right. up last year, and it's beautiful. But the byway, it's just, it's mapped. I didn't do all 125 miles of it, but it takes you past sites. And I found it, again, so evocative because you go by an old field that you knew at one point was was a plantation and people were escaping Slaves through were and um i like that they didn't develop I and mean, the interpretive center is great because you get the history and the stories but to be able to just drive by and still see all of that open space it, it, there's a movie coming out called harriet yep in, in, oh cool in the next month that looks to be very very yeah. i hope they filmed it here they did and then in the winter you'll see tundra swans which are just amazing too when they come through by water yeah, that whole thing, you know, it always or struck Blackwater, me. Blackwater, sorry. I, watch, I, read, uh, I try and read Chesapeake, the book, like every mm-hmm. three years or so. And actually, I, you know, like a kid, so I, I, have, I don't have a lot of time to read anymore. So I got the Libby app, which is awesome. It's through the library and you can, you can borrow library books on the Libby app, audio books. Oh, good yeah. to know. So, Although you should buy books too when you can. No, I mean, your book, yeah, obviously. <laughs> that's, that's, but um, this was, so I listened to it, it 70 hours. And the downside oh, is that, you know, it takes. The downside of the Libby app is that even when you, when you order something, it does take a long time, like months before you get it. But there's always this one one thing that I always get. It. They follow four families from the 1500s to the 1980s. And at one point, uh, the Turlocks, he, he starts to sell real estate on the eastern shore. He, and they were marsh people. They lived in the marsh. They were like really yeah. sneaky, you know, people, skulky people. And But he started to sell real estate. And at one point, he takes a plane. This is in the, in the 50s. And they, it's like a Piper Cup. And he has a friend who takes him up. And he looks down. And he starts crying. And he says, we live in paradise. Aww. And it always just – I always think about that when I drive yeah. the Eastern Shore. Just what – how amazing this is. And everyone thinks their state is unique. And of course, every yeah. state is unique. I lived in New Mexico and it was beautiful and the desert was amazing. But when you go to the Eastern Shore and you see like the Sassafras and the yeah, Avon yeah. and, you know, uh, the Bohemia River, all these rivers and just what gems they are. And yeah, they are largely goosebumps. unspoiled. Yeah. Yeah, they really are. Absolutely. I mean, come in 50 years, we'll take a look. But right now, you know, people are creeping over the bridge. They've crept over. They're in Queenstown. You know, they're starting to spread out. And they're yeah. all of a sudden, they're like, we hate the traffic. I'm like, well, you're part of the reason exactly. there's traffic. Exactly. But, but we still, there's so much unspoiled stuff. Yeah. And there's so many gems you have in the book that you can really dig. I, 
I would challenge anyone to go onto the Avalon website in Easton and look at the music lineup they have. Go there, like get a hotel room, get yeah. find an inn or a B and B. That's what we did. We stayed it at the Tidewater and ambled over to the Rock Show. It was great. They get great acts, and it's mm-hmm. a great venue. Yeah, I can't. I, it always astounds me that they have a, you have a venue literally in the middle of nowhere. I think bands love to play it because it's a, it's a break. It's you know on the road, the long road from if you're playing in Philly and then you're playing in DC, and it's it's unique. It's most of the bands that I've talked to th- that come through the ramps had love love a small room because yeah. they're able to see that they can get with the audience. I mean. There's something to be said about playing for a stadium, too. But yeah. I mean, uh, you know, and I think people at Annapolis know their music. I mean, there's live music here every night of the week, which is great. And it's not something that happens, especially in other towns that are one, this One small. of the things that you mentioned in here uh, are some of the summer festival or the summer concerts. Okay, the Maritime Museum. I know you've got the Tides and Tunes and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. And I don't understand why the city has not gotten their act together from Labor Day to Memorial Day. Memorial Day to Labor Day. <laughs> I get, I get I was thinking that yeah. those nine but months. Yeah. Either way. <laughs> you, you, with all the people that sponsor weekly concert series between the Annapolis Town Center and the Maritime Museum yeah. and everything else, you could see free music every single night yeah. of the week for three solid months. Yeah. If they would just work to market themselves together and swap off days, but they've got these squatting right now. I'm Thursday. Yeah, I'm Thursday. absolutely. And I, it would, you know, it may not be the music that you want. I mean, you know, okay, they're doing country twang. I don't, I don't care for that, but. But it's live music it's, and it's, it's musicians it's and, and, it's, and it's, and it's free. And I think yeah. that would be just such a huge selling point yeah. for the area. A hundred things to do in Apples before you die. Are you going to do another one? You have another Who book knows? in you? I, to South County. Sure. What is South so. County? Is South County south of Annapolis or south of the South River? That's, oh, that's going to keep me up at night. I consider it south of the South River. I have not actually given it much thought. Well, I want to keep you up then. But you had a little bit of stuff on the south, <laughs> south of the South River. I did. There. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's... 420 or 214 might be the, the line. Yeah. Oh, that's the other argument I've heard. Yeah. South I of mean, that. I think there could be a whole bay, a book just about the bay and the places that just touch on the bay. I just, Who knows? I just want to keep delving into this area. I love it. I'll tell you, if anybody wants to get 100 Things to Do in Annapolis, you can obviously get it at Amazon. Uh, put a couple of pennies in Jeff Bezos' pocket like he needs more. Barnes & Noble. I was, I was Old Fox Barnes. Books, which is one of my favorite, yeah, favorite, great. favorite spots in That's Annapolis. On Maryland Avenue. On Maryland Avenue. And you are having an event coming up soon at Galway Bay. Correct? I am. Yeah. What is that? That is Galway. the um, – it's Tuesday. I believe it's the 22nd because it's a Tuesday. So they do trivia every Tuesday. And like it's real – Trivia. They're really good yeah, at no, they it. They chased me out of there. I, oh. it, it, it was hardcore. So, <laughs> so they're going to do um, a segment of the night devoted to trivia from the book. And, and I'm not involved in it. He's figuring out the questions. I probably won't have the answers. And the way that it works there is that the teams donate, I think it's I think it's $10 to, to buy, to in, buy and then, in. And then the winner gets And then to that goes the- to it. To, well, they're letting me choose the charity. So I'm um, donating it to Annapolis Green, which is a small nonprofit based on State Circle, and they yeah, we don't like Elvia, so let's not talk. About <laughs> just talk just <laughs> and Lynn. <laughs> um, so I hope that people come out. It'll be a great cause, and um, I will have books in the back. But they told me you can't sell books until after that segment's done because we don't want people, you know, leafing through for answers, ah. which is cool by me. Old Fox Books mentioned that they're great. Yeah, Their they backyard, are. If the, you've never been there, that is the mustache. A gem. Oh, it's magic. What's it? Your your father's mustache? Um, the brown coffee. mustache coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like out of Hogwarts. That whole place. It's it's a little piece of magic for sure. You go down to the basement. So if you've never been there, they have the books bookshop upstairs. There's like multiple levels, and they have like this garden in the back, and they have the coffee place, and it's very very tight. And you go down this kind of nondescript uh, or not descript. You go down this tiny. Uh, tiny, winding staircase, winding staircase. Yeah. and you're downstairs and it's like these stone walls and it's like you know out of Casca of Amontillado or something you know there's someone's walled in there somewhere yeah but it's it's awesome it's great it smells like books and they have multiple book clubs that are open to the public I joined one when I first moved back as a way to meet people and I'm still going we're reading Shirley Jackson this month and for those um, that are looking oh she's for, great yeah, yeah great. it's really good the, the lottery they, um, I have read that. We're reading We've Always Lived in the Castle, and it's great. And yeah. you can just go on their website and see. Yeah. Where, I think they have four book clubs at this point going on. And, and for those that don't know where it is, it's is, you've got many the main stores on Maryland Avenue. He's mo- motioning with his hands. Yeah. On yeah. The, on yeah. The right it's is closer to the, the academy. academy. Yeah. Next and, to Hammond uh, Harwood. And it's it's just it's a great little find it that is. you've got there. It almost looks like it's in a residential section of the, yeah. of, of the city. Um, but. Is, it's great. I mean, Maryland Avenue is, is, and you said that in your it's book. It's my favorite it's just such street. A street. I mean, it's yeah. so, 
eclectic and funky. I mean, you've got Annabeth, which has, you know, everything. Yeah, She's I mean, awesome. an aspirin yeah. or a six pack of weird beer. Yeah, or they have really good Rice Krispie treats and there. She's, she's open all the time. You go down there at like 10.30 and she's yeah. open. It's yeah. great. And it's neighborhoody. It's yeah. good. No, it, it's it's fun. And she's got a really good wine selection too. Mm-hmm. The she little does. laundromat there. I love the laundromat. I want that candy machine that's there. I was actually going to make and a And I've offer. seen, I was at Galway Bay one night and they were doing a play in the laundromat. Were they which really? is awesome. I love that there's a creative community here that can put on plays in the laundromat. And you, it was packed. You knew they were St. John's. I don't think it was. It I think it was a local be. playwright. That's such, such a giant yeah. thing to do. I don't think it Let's was. Let's have a play in a laundromat. We'll call it Tide. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also a play on the bay. I, actually, right. that works on many levels. Mm-hmm. I like it. It's in double entendre. Yes, it That's is. It. Tuesday the 22nd, yeah. Galway Bay. Yeah. You can meet Susan Moynihan. You can uh, get 100 things to do in Annapolis. It's been the Eastern Shore before you die. There are a... You, and honestly, and they have the largest whiskey selection in Maryland of Irish whiskeys. Yes, yes, they do. And actually, they just put a new thing on their website where you can actually tour the bar and go in and you actually zoom in onto the, the bottles. Mm. Okay, really, and if you click on the bottle, it'll tell you the little story about like where it was. Oh, that's that's cool. crazy. Yeah, it's really it's pretty cool. <laughs> Some pretty cool tech. Um, but you know, for for a book that I sort of roll my eyes at, you Aww. you, you nailed it. Amazed the I mean, world. I was. Um, and he rolls really his eyes for wanted it Except for the whole Davis thing, but okay, you we'll, we'll we let you s- agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll let you. We'll let you say. I, mean, I love Davis's, but I, I, I'm not willing to go into the uh, the dive bar on it just gotcha. yet. And and I, I do agree with you. I think that you probably could have easily done 100 in Annapolis only, and yep. could have uh, probably expanded that to 200. And maybe version two will be Annapolis, and then Eastern Shore. Yes, yeah, she was smart. She sandbagged. Yeah. You know why? Why do it all in one wad? Exactly. And she can. She have, you know, two hundred things. You, yeah, yeah. You kind of leave room for sequels. Yeah. Well, where where can we find you? And where what's your, what's your website? Or um, I ha- there's a Facebook page, Hundred Things to Do Annapolis. Okay. So that's there. I have a website, susanmoynihan dot com, that has a link where you can buy books. Assuming cool. I got my square set up correctly. So yeah, either Is way. Is that a big assumption? <laughs> you know, it worked at the arts festival, but I haven't tried it online yet, so we'll see. <laughs> um, yeah. Fantastic. And and you have been around. You were at, for Sunday Arts um, mm-hmm. for one weekend. You have um, I know you had another book signing at Old Fox at one point. Mm-hmm. And, I'll be doing um, Chestertown, um, the book plate at some point. I did Barnes and Noble, Ellicott City. I'll be doing Midnight Madness, hopefully in the Annapolis Green Office, which would be fun. Okay, yeah, so we'll see. Madnesses are great. Yeah, they are. Because it's got alcohol. It does, yeah. <laughs> and cookies. And, and reasons to buy things. <laughs> Absolutely. Susan Moynihan, great job on 100 Things to Do Thank in Annapolis Nation Shore Before You Die. It was uh, a pleasure talking with you. And it was funny, we sat there and we met a year ago at the boat show. And we, I, I sort of, it dawned on me at this year's boat show, I said, Oh, yeah, I think I met her. That's that girl. I was doing that book. I, it actually came out. <laughs> Shocking. Well, this is a treat. Thank you so much. I think your website is a huge asset to the community, and it's a go-to for me. So oh, thanks. the fact that you like the book means a lot. Oh, and one more thing I want to say about the book, which I think is really cool. If you go to the back of the book, uh, yeah, it's got the boring index, but it also has two suggest. It's got a section for suggested itineraries. Um, so if you're looking to you know get into the foodie thing or whatever it is like that, and also by season. So if you're yeah. want to come here and see Christmas season, okay, you're going to hit the uh, parade of lights, mm-hmm. which I think they're probably going to sue me or something because it's not called that. It's called the light parade. Yes, lights parade. Yeah, <laughs> you know, or or you're going to see you know you know the the pomp and circumstance that surrounds the Army Navy game or and the after hours um, Annapolis by candlelight when you get to go sneak yeah. into people's houses. That's always fun. Yeah, so that that's a great. Way Thanks. to break, the, break break down a hundred things is to do it by the season. Okay, hey, I'm here in the spring. What 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 yeah. is there? Because there is stuff happening all year long. It's not just a summer no. tourist spot at all. Without a doubt. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, Thank you Susan. This was fun. This has been the Maryland Crabs podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places: Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now, get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously, go! You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go. Go.